Ben Brown, I'm here with Modern Self Protection. Today, I'm going to talk about shoulder holsters. Luke over at Craft Holsters was kind enough to send me a couple samples of holsters. It turned out to be the same one, but that's okay. Um, they're made by their Falco brand, and it's actually in Eastern Europe. The leather's really nice and thick, and it turned out real well. Um, it's just a cool thing, and I always wanted a shoulder holster. So when he contacted me and said, hey, you want to test some of our holsters? I said, yeah. I would love to say a shoulder holster. I've never had a good leather shoulder holster to try. So I thought that this would be great. And so I'm wearing one right now. And if you look a little bit, you can almost see it kind of almost that I'm carrying a full size M&P on me. So if I just take the shirt off, now you can see the gun, the extra mags, the whole deal, which is kind of cool. You get two set up and everything. And then I'm going to talk about his holster especially and his design and how leather holsters are kind of weird. So let's talk about the leather holsters are kind of weird kind of thing. The leather holster, I have to reach all the way across my body to get it, and then this hand is always in the way. This is not something you can practice at the gen or at the range because generally that gun has to sweep around everything. And I've been working and try to, this one comes straight up and down, trying to get it straight up, come around, and then on target. But really, that doesn't work at all with the design of the holster. When it comes out, the holster rotates a little bit, 45 degrees towards the front and the muzzle up and then it just kind of rips straight apart. And I'm finding that I am not the most flexible person, so a shoulder holster might not be the option if you're bigger like me and not as flexible. But what I have to do is reach apart, grab that snap off, the gun rotates down a little bit when you grab it. You can see that it, it rotates, which is cool, because now I get a better grip on the gun. But coming up, I can't really come up and around and then safe on target. And you can see that this is a dummy gun with a dummy barrel in it. It's really easier for me just to grab the gun straight out and straight up and come around than to try to do the whole around thing. So when I grab the gun, I get the hand up out of the face like I was gonna block it or something, grab the gun, and then just straight out and around to here. And if you're not standing against a wall, you don't bump the wall. But me, standing against a wall, I get to bump the wall. You can see where there's disadvantages here when you're getting in close and stuff. So. It's a long motion and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to put the holster back, uh, put the gun back. And you can see I can't talk and do it at the same time because this is a, a new rig for me and I'm working on it. But it does have that thumb brake there, which is, I call it a thumb brake, but really I have to get it with my fingers. And you can see I can get it with all my fingers right here when I reach across to get a grip on the gun, reach across, it rocks, and then I have a better grip on the gun. And now I can come out with the gun and it goes on target right away. As long as I don't cross this, arm right so for me i was practicing with it and hugging it is really a great point and then for me a mag change man that is a lot of work because it's way over there for me being unflexible and unready to go so but they do fit real well so i have the one i'm not wearing right here to show you the fit and finish on the holster and the gun and how this actually works because they're designed it's a little bit different than everything else and that's why I was kind of, I was glad when he contacted me and I got to play with one because, well, <laughs> I get to play with one. So that's kind of cool. So when I step out here, first you can see he's got standard screws that adjust everything. And you can see how much adjustment is on this holster. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. Um, I actually had to adjust mine all the way out because, well, I'm that big of a guy. So it fits all the way out. His... He, come, he sent it just like this, and it's got all that adjustment, and it's got nice keepers that are metal buckles down here that are actually painted so they shouldn't rust. He's got metal buckles and everything screwed together right here, so hopefully it will never come off. I don't see how it would. On the bottom of the holster, the gun part, he's actually got a snap that goes through the belt. I found that this is absolutely necessary wearing this holster is to actually wear an actual shirt and a belt, and you can see that I'm wearing a belt that holds the holster in place so it doesn't move without that snap. On the other side, double mag pouch with the same adjustability and this square there holds it all together on the back. You pull it on like a shirt. I haven't had any problems with that. I pretty enjoy it. Um, the holsters fit really nice, the mag pouch. And his mag pouch is a really good design. I've seen, well, this one would be a great belt pouch too. Two different screws to do the retention right here. Nice snaps and a leather, all leather one piece around the back so there's not two sewn together. And just really nice how everything is bolted and screwed together and all the 
all the metal is actually painted so it's nice in a black color and it's not really wearing off yet so I don't think it's going to rust. And then on this side it's a nylon strap but this one is adjustable, kind of infinitely adjustable with a quick adjust belt buckle and it snaps over your belt again. The only thing is do you feel every good leather holster I've ever had if you move around a little bit it squeaks. Um, this one is no different. That's the only downside with, um, well, not the only downside, but it's a really big downside that I keep doing Kydex because my Kydex doesn't squeak half as much as the leather does. And it's just funny to have a squeaky holster, right? Anyways, let me show you their cool, innovative design that I thought was like the best thing of this holster. And it's actually, they call it a roto holster. And it sits underneath your arm, you know, just like this, just like it is on my over here. Yeah, I see it. And then when you do it though, you unsnap your finger brake or your thumb brake, and then the holster actually rotates out 45 degrees. And you can see how far that rotates out. And I guess it's about 45 degrees, but it rotates out and it stops. It's got two pivot points, actually one, that's just bolted straight across to the holster. The holster, you can see the holster inside and the actual holder are two different things and it's put together by one pinch point right there. And then with the snap, it holds it all in up, straight up and down. So, um, Downside of this holster is that I thought I thought with this finger brake it would never come open even with stuff wrapped apart I can pull hard enough that the gun will come out without doing undoing the snap but it's a you can see I'm using a lot of force there when I put the gun back in with the snap it uh, doesn't really come out and so that rotating for me when you get that finger groove and then this whole thing will rotate 45 degrees out that makes it way easier for me, unflexible, to get to that holster. So I'm actually liking this thing, and I'm gonna try to carry a shoulder holster a little bit around the house and stuff, and I might I might just supplement and do twice. I got my table in the way, so I can't step back. I might wear a second gun and a shoulder holster, just because I'm so used to going to the gun on my hip, but the shoulder holster is kind of a cool gig, and I'm kind of liking it, and it's just super comfortable. It's another thing you can do and to wear. And one of the nicest things for some of you guys out there that are like me, and this is why cops used to wear them, you know, back in the 70s and everything, is because when you get home or you get off duty or you get to where you're going to take your gun off or put it on, um, as much as we don't like to, we all take our gun off and put it off. But I can undo, you know, and his snaps are really tough. They're not coming off. But I can undo two snaps, pull it out of my belt, undo the snap on the other side, pull it out of my belt, and I can take the whole thing off like I would a jacket or a shirt and just hang the whole rig somewhere with my weapon loaded and with the two mags all filled up. And then when I'm gonna put it back on, all I gotta do is put it on like a shirt over my head. It's on, put the two snaps around my belt buckle, snap them in and then be done with it. Without the snaps, you can see that the gun flops around and it's actually pretty tough to get that gun out of the holster unless you snap it down. So that is the one downside to, I guess a shoulder holster design is another downside to it. You have to do that. But I'm going to play with it a little bit and I'll keep you informed and let you know how the review goes on uh, Luke's holsters. And go to craftholsters.com, check them out. There's a lot of beautiful leather work there. And uh, after seeing some of his leather work, I would I would love to have one of his old, other holsters. I might, I might need one and have to go buy one from him. So go check out craftholsters.com. Thank you for watching. This is Ben with Modern Self Protection. Go check out modernselfprotection.com. The links for the holster that I have are actually below in the description. So if you want to see that roto shoulder holster, all leather, comes in different colors, different materials, go check that out.